This is Zerdizzle back with another round at the course that I first played back in the 90s. Got me hooked on disc golf. That is Bradley Park in Peoria, Illinois. So I'm going to walk you through an 18 here. It's got kind of a set of mixed pins, some short, some long. So hole one, par three, 358. Very difficult too, though. Most people are playing for three. It's a huge hyzer up and around there and all you're trying to do is get somewhere up top or close to being up top and that one didn't quite make it but you really really got to cut it close on the right to get yourself a chance at two and I've tooted it before but never never parked it up there but once you can get inside 100 120 it's a pretty easy upshot so there I threw my Cenus uh, went a little to the right but nothing nothing too dangerous there is a little out of bounds to the right and long but Again, pretty pretty easy three. Not a lot of score separation there. Very few twos and not a ton of fours. All right, hole two. And this one drops off quite a bit to the right. Um, and I do throw a forehand here, but this verdict, that prime verdict I throw is just so beat in. If you look at that, it just turns to the left and just holds, holds, holds. Um, anything more overstable than that, and you'll go down the hill. You can kind of see the little elevation change uh, behind the basket there, but left me about 15, 20 feet, which, again, this is similar to the last round I played at Wildlife, and there's about a 10 mile, 5, 10 mile an hour wind with some little gusts. It'll flare up periodically throughout the round. All right, hole three. This is 356, and it's in my range, but it is slightly downhill to the left over there, and this is a tricky range for me because... 356, if I go full power, I can overthrow it, and there is OB behind the basket. So right here, you can't see it, but there's a significant drop-off behind the basket, so you got to be careful how hard you run this. Um, so I, I try to do like an 80 to 90% forehand, which means I don't always get my angle correct. So that is, that's definitely one of the things I need to work on, is not quite a max range and gave it a good run. Not quite a max range forehand, you know, that 310, 320, 330 range. That's just something I've got to work on a little bit. So I ended up with a par, nothing nothing too bad. I do like to birdie that one, but I'm not upset when I don't get it. Not like hole two. Uh, speaking of ones, I get a little upset when I don't get them. Hole four here. And again, a lot of elevation here. I shouldn't say a lot, but it does drop off down and to the left and so this is in the short pin so you want something that just gets over the crest of that hill and then kind of fades to the left so 220 i'm going to throw my cenus uh, for those of you that don't know that that's an overstable putter and so right there and it starts to turn and that's just beautiful right where i wanted it and they do have some some railroad ties there some little wood and it leaned up right against one of those so easy little five foot tap in. I love those. The long pin is actually fun. It's another 30, 40 feet down the hill there. And you've got an OB road there that comes into play if you uh, get too aggressive. So a good start. I was able to get hole two, hole four. So this one, the basket is to the right there. There's a line to the left, but if you want to deuce this one, it's only 289, but this is another one like hole one. That's just a very, very, very challenging uh, two. You can actually go out over the road to the far right. I go right up the gut there, and that was working pretty well, but then I clipped a tree and dropped down, so that kind of took a two out of play. But this is another one where I'm not upset when I get a, a three. Not not in the long position. In the shorts, it's actually to the left and at the top of the hill, and you've got a nice little path, but I don't think there's really a good play here other than going out over the road, OB. And so here, I'm just going to throw my verdict, toss it up there, get the three, get out. Because so I know I've got a couple short holes coming up here that I should be able to birdie. So slight, it's up on like a little crest of a hill there, but three is pretty standard there. Um, if you do take the left path off the tee, it can ricochet to the left and leave you basically a four at best. Very tricky. All right, hole six up the gut here. Again, I'm getting through all my Cenus, so it's overstable, but if I put a little little bit of juice on it, it'll turn over. And all you're trying to do is hit the field goals here, hit the gap. And that one was a little higher than I wanted, but it's going to end up very, very well. Uh, my, my height control today was a little off. Um, because of the wind, so it would tap in right there. Uh, because of the wind, I was kind of putting myself in positions where I was getting nose up, so it kind of knocked the disc down a little bit, but... All right, so the hole seven here. The basket is way over to the left. 
but I'm gonna take the right route. So it's 555. You'll see when we get up there that the, the basket's right near the road. There's, you can go the left route with like a turnover. I don't really have a good power power backhand, like four, 420, 450 to clear that. So what I do is I just throw it out wide here. And that was a very, very good drive. That was 350 plus easy on Heiser. Got myself way out there. And all you're trying to do if, if you go that right route is to put yourself in a position where you got a nice easy uh, upshot. So here I decided to mess around and throw the forehand on that route and I crushed that one, but it kept turning and turning and turning and turning. It went over the road and never came back into play. So I'll show you where it landed. It landed here within 150. I mean, that was a crush, but it was out of bounds. Again, I just like to mess around with that. Here's where my drive ended up. So significantly far to the right, but I'd say it's about 250 into the basket. Maybe a little shorter, 250, 240, something in that range. So I'm gonna throw my prime verdict and that thing is beat in, but it will finish um, to the left. I actually had a headwind in that and I didn't judge it correctly. And the headwind flipped that verdict over. I was not happy with the result. I thought it was gonna finish left and it actually pushed it right down into this little, almost to the road. A uh, little awkward footing. So you see it kind of goes down and I wasn't able to really get a good good footing down here and I'm not going to use that as an excuse but I definitely was not comfortable with where I was standing um, and so what I should have done is swung my back leg a little further to my left uh, to kind of adjust for that that height and I did not I had I had the right height I just missed it you can tell I was a little frustrated there and then I adjusted so it's a little annoying and this is the only par four on the course so I was hoping to get a three on it and I actually almost hit the <laughs> The camera tripod here so tossing it in get my four Boo. after a good drive that was kind of disappointing all right hole eight this is a nice little turnover shot lots of ob on the, the left if you hit a tree it will kick out of bounds um it goes down into a little goalie and then back up to the hill so all i'm trying to do is just pure this gap right up the middle um, so i'm going to throw my lucid sparkle emac truth and it was beautiful there's a one tree straight ahead and i just missed it and that was within 10 feet and hole nine is actually back the other way so i leave the camera down here and you'll see when i go up there and pick it up it's 10 feet from the basket pretty much it's happened love those see all the trees though i mean there's some decent sized gaps but you definitely got to watch any tree you hit has a potential to kick out of bounds and we finish off the top nine, the basket's straight ahead there. Um, there's a big drop off behind the basket, 365. Um, a lot of people go up the gut. I actually like using my power forehand. You just gotta be careful because if you turn this over too much, there's a huge drop off to the left, like a good 50 foot drop off down into the abyss, down by a road. You do not want to go that way. And so I take this left route and I, again, it's that range. And I just, that was perfect. It's that range where I, that was about 90, 95%. If I go any harder, it'll go too far, but this was perfect. It did kind of a flare skip the end and put me about 20 feet away from the basket, pin high. So that was a pretty good, pretty good drive. I'm very rarely down this far. Now, if I go full power, I can hit that route, but it will go down and out of bounds there behind the basket. So you gotta be careful and you just have to kind of ignore everything else and bang the putt in. So. I made some good putts up here, but my putts were really not feeling that great. Again, the wind was five to 10, which is not super strong, but it was enough to kind of throw me off. So mentally, my putts were just not there. So after the whole nine, we finish up. So the top nine and the bottom nine are in different uh, tiers. So up top here in the upper park, you've got holes one through nine, and then you got a short walk um, on a street here and then on a path down to the bottom nine. And so sometimes, I'm not gonna throw it here, but there's a practice practice basket right there. Lots of little trees, and I'll sometimes throw that, which is kind of fun. And that was hole one we were headed back to right there. All right, hole 10, we start off the, the bottom nine here. Pretty easy shot, 225. Again, the wind was kind of in my head a little bit, and I had mentioned earlier in the round that I was not paying attention to my elevation and my release, so right there, I got it a little nose up, and that was probably my worst drive of the day. I mean, 222 feet straight ahead, and I'm 35 feet out. And 
and there's a little wind right here. So now I have to bang a putt just outside of circle one to get a birdie on probably the easiest hole in the course. And as you see there, I missed it. So that was, I went, <laughs> I was a little frustrated right there. I was able to deuce hole nine, which was 356 feet. And then I can't, <laughs> I can't make the 220 foot shot straight ahead. So, but that was my backhand release. I haven't been playing as much is a little off. So my, my angle again, I got, I think I got it nose up at least three or four times this round and it just did not work for me. Um, here's another one. So hole 11 and 205. I've actually aced this hole with the disc I'm throwing right here, which is a lucid X EMAC truth. And right there, I just didn't quite throw it how I wanted. And it came out way, way, way too early. And I guess it rolled, but it's all the way in the woods here. So again, got it a little nose up. It hyzered out too early. I usually when I miss, I'll miss to the left and not to the right like this. And so I have really no easy shot here. This is probably circle's edge give or take. And I've got to do kind of a straddle out. So I'm knee down, my foot can't really see, but my right leg is all the way in the woods. And I'm just, I barely, I have to kind of do a little turnover putt. So you can tell it's kind of an awkward stance. And you see the bushes blowing a little bit too. So the wind's blowing, just not an easy putt. And when I threw it, I thought I had it, but if you saw there, it kind of elevated as soon as I throw it. Um, if you didn't see that, watch it again. You can see as soon as I let go, about a third of the way to the basket, the disc kind of popped up in the air, and it just never had a chance. But again, that's numbers 10 and 11 are ones I really, really want to get, and I didn't really have a good putt at either one of them, so a little disappointing. All right, hole 12. This one, it's around the corner. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I threw this one, there's two pin positions. I thought it was in the short. I didn't I didn't think to walk ahead and look. And I'm throwing my Octane, which is a pretty, you'll you see I use a lot on this back nine. And that was a beautiful shot. I'm, I'm listening for it. I'm listening to see if there's an ace because I thought it was gonna be a good ace run. And I get up here <laughs> and it's not here. See, here's the short position right there and I'm, five feet away from it and it's not it's in the long um in this one i'm not gonna lie the wind was kind of swirling a little bit not too bad but it's a big drop off down to the creek there on the left so i kind of yeah i kind of wussed that one up there not gonna lie but to show you what happened so that was my layup and then that was my run which almost went in but then it actually rolled halfway down the hill which would have been, I would have probably wouldn't been able to make the, the putt from down there, but it was definitely not somewhere I wanted to be. So it was right there. I kind of got lucky, but got the three out of it. That's, that's three holes that I think are bonus ones. So hole one was definitely a bonus, um, hole five, and then that one are just really tough ones to get. Now I learned from my mistakes, this whole hole 13 actually has three pin positions. There's one that's straight ahead up on the hill uh, about 380 there's a position to the right and so I know this one's tucked in way in the woods to the left and so I throw my octane again and I like the octane because I can throw it down about 75 percent and just let it crash in I don't know if you could hear that it slammed into the tree right here so that was maybe maybe ace running um, but again this this putt was a tailwind putt so I knew it was gonna push it down so I aimed a little high and aimed a little harder and that's one where there is a creek, and I threw a second one and just completely airballed it. Again, my putts, I just did not feel comfortable with them today. But got the birdie, so no complaints. All right, I really like this one. Uh, tunnel shot, uh, creek on the left, which the water isn't too bad, but there are some times where you throw it in that creek and it is a goner. So I'm going to throw my forehand. And again, it's 350, so it's pretty close to full power and I thought that was really 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 good and it hit the very last tree where I think if I would have missed that tree I would have been pin high 25 feet maybe in the woods a little bit um instead you see there was just that tree to the right and now I'm inside circle two but not in a good spot so I'm gonna half run this one but with with the winds five to ten today and my putts not feeling really 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 comfortable I'm not really going to run this super hard. I mean, that was just, I'm kind of, I don't even know what to say. Kind of disappointed with those, but I didn't want to leave myself too much. And I tried to tweak things a little bit on this video. Instead of doing like another 
clip, I just decided to keep it running to show you the distance. So instead of starting a new new one, I figured that would be... I won't say it's quicker, but it's easier for me filming than to pick up the camera, move it up, shift, putt from 10 feet, turn it off. It's just much easier to do that. All right, that's one I wanted to get, but... All right, this is a pretty much on the bottom nine here with these pin positions. This is a must get. So this used to be around 250-ish, mid-250s, uh, but they tucked the pin about 10, 15 feet further back in the woods, and so there's my octane again, and that is just beautiful shot. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, if you replay that in slow-mo, you can see my arm angle. I kind of dropped my arm a little bit to get a, a hyzer angle on it. And you see the wood chips right there. I just passed are the normal short pin and then they tucked it up in the woods there so another 10 15 feet so i i guessed on the distance i think it's about 265 um straight hyzer but we got the birdie out of it so again cannot complain about that and then this one i did look ahead as well it is a very very difficult par three it's around the corner here so you got to put it on hyzer um there is creek ob you're throwing over and this one right here, I threw a great shot, but there's a headwind that just kept that thing straight as an arrow. And I thought it would hyzer a little more, but it, as you can see, I almost went OB. And I just did not, did not adjust for the headwind on that one. Got some good distance out of it. And so here there's just, there's pretty much nothing. Um, I could do a turnover shot, but I just end up playing it way wide to the right. And that was my Cenus and just letting it roll back in. Didn't really have a run at it. And you, there's some bushes back there that if you are from about 100 feet, you can give it a reasonable run and not worry about it going too long. But with the trees in the way, I just really didn't have a shot at all. Okay, hole 17, straight ahead, 330. Um, I actually like the long pin here. The long pin here is about 390 or something, a little under 400. And you can take a forehand route. So this one, I just throw my catalyst. And again, I just got the nose up a little bit. My arm angle is just a little off. I need to need to do a little field work this week, and left myself again. This range, I'm just not. I've been not been hitting these. This, this one's a little inside circle one. I'd say it's about 25. Um, I just just was not hitting these today. Just letting the wind mess with my head too much, and that one I threw a little harder. And I just, you can tell I'm tired and frustrated. I just especially when I throw the second one. And I, and I do hyzer putt like that. That's my normal putting style. It's worked well for me over the years. But that one, again, 330, I kind of gave it away. And I just, I don't, I didn't feel like I had a good, I felt like I had a good top nine, the back nine, I just, I didn't really feel great about. So we're going to try to finish strong here, 311. I think this plays a touch longer, but there is no direct route. There's a lot of trees in the way. So I like to play this route, which is kind of a hyzer around those two darker trees and kind of take the back door. And that one actually skipped a little long. So it's 311, and I'm about, again, there's that range again, 25. And right now, I'm all I'm thinking to myself, I've got a couple guys coming up they're about ready to tee off and I'm just thinking, please hit this one. And I made the adjustment, it just got over the lip. And so I was able to finish with the birdie. Um, overall, decent round, good front nine. The last nine, I just need to work on the putts. I've got a tournament clear, coming up guys. this weekend. I definitely wanna practice the putts a little bit. So there it is, finished with a eight under 47. Again, this course is all par threes except for hole seven, which is a par four. And so I was able to get few birdies on that and here are the stats so my circle one putting was only 80 percent. i missed several makeable putts you know in that but none of them were none of them were shorties they were all the 25 30 just outside 20 i mean none of them were inside 20 so i'm okay with missing a few of those but that's definitely something in the in the yard i'm gonna take the basket out and work on some uh, 25 footers uh, hopefully in some wind and see if we can clean that up for this weekend. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, my home course, Bradley Park.